With me now to talk about this is Congressman Stephen Palazzo. He's a member of the House Appropriations Committee. He is a member of the Republican Study Committee and the Values Action Team. He represents the 4th Congressional District of Mississippi. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Tony, thank you for having me. It's great to be back on. Let me first get your reaction to President Biden's letter to these uh, oil companies demanding that they produce more. It, you know, it's the same uh, rhetoric that this administration has been throwing out there against the oil and gas industry. I, I'm probably the only member of Congress that actually worked offshore. I know there's other members that have been uh, involved in the oil and gas upstream. But, you know, it's, it, the oil and gas industry is one of the most patriotic uh, the, uh, industries that we have. Uh, the people that I've worked with, they're God-fearing Americans. And for him to just single out an industry the way that he does, it, he, he's not coming up with solutions. He's not addressing the problems. And as you know, he wants to blame oil and gas. He wants to blame Ukraine. He wants to blame Trump and Republicans for all the failures that he's caused. And, and, and if, you know, if he was true to himself, uh, what's causing all the pain and suffering in America right now, it, it's a direct result of his woke left liberal progressive policies that are destroying um, our country. Well, I, I'm, I'm right next door, uh, my home state, Louisiana, very much energy um, minded. I mean, that's where we get the bulk of our, our revenue. And part of the problem, this has long been the problem, but it's been it's become increasingly an issue, is our refining capacity remains low. And, and, and a, one of the major contributing factors to that is the cost of building new refineries because of the government restrictions and regulations. Absolutely. It's not only the cost, it's the permitting, and there's not a lot of profit to be had in refineries. So there's really not... And again, I mean, you know, I don't think we built a refinery in America in over 40 years. And most of the refineries that we do have are, are, are somewhat fully operational and putting out as much output as they can. I know they're going to increase output by the end of the year. But if the president really wants to address the cost of gas, Elaine, and the cost of energy, well, one, stop your rhetoric against the oil and gas industry. Two, cut the red tape lift the restrictions on offshore and onshore leasing, and offer support for the in industry. So they may go in and put investments uh, out there and capital outlays to help drive down the cost of energy in the future. Yeah, I think uh, the projection is by the end of June, the refineries will be at 96 percent capacity. And we're coming into uh, the hurricane season in which uh, oftentimes these uh, refineries ha on the Gulf Coast have to be shut down if a storm is coming in. So clearly those could be hiccups in the supply line. But there was a 10-point plan put forward by the American Petroleum Institute uh, that uh, makes, as you said, the administration short on solutions. They put forth some solutions. One is cutting the red tape that ensnares these energy projects, lifting the restrictions for on and offshore lease sales, um, and, and offering support for new investments in production. Yeah, I, I mean, you have it right there. I mean, that, I think that's only three out of the 10 points, but those are the most important points. I mean, we have over 400 years worth of fossil fuel energy for America. And, you know, they're, they're, they're rushed to the Green New Deal. They're rushed to um, the renewables. Um, I think they're going to make huge mistakes, and, and, and we're going to suffer uh, not just in the short term, but also in the long term. This is, you know, th th this, there's no accident uh, this administration is going after the oil and gas industry because they want everybody driving electric vehicles. They want to, um, you know, get people out, out of combustion engines and, and to actually, you know, they, I think back in the day of Barack Obama, he actually mentioned that. Eight nine dollar per gallon gas is that really a bad thing if we could you know free ourselves of our dependence on fossil fuels and I'm telling you from being in South Mississippi I don't think renewables uh, will, will will run the air conditioners we need no. in the summer months in the southern states yeah those windmills don't blow fast enough um, I, I, I want to. I don't have really have time to get into this but I I, I don't think these oil companies many of them that have very 
uh, left-leaning policy supporting a lot of this woke stuff at the corporate level should be surprised when the politicians they elect push these socialist policies on them. But that, that, that's a conversation for another day. I do. You're a CPA. You've got a background in finance. What, what do families need to be doing as we go into the turbulent times of this Biden economy? Well, they definitely need to be saving um, and, and pension pennies because, you know, obviously there's a lot of traffic right now. And I just think that's because people have been, you know, cooped up from COVID for two years. There seems to be a lot of traffic on Interstate 10, people going to the beaches. But unlike we've seen, you know, pre-pandemic and when gasoline was $2 a gallon, and of course that was only two short years. Um, and, and once the Biden administration took over, the price of gas has just been steadily increasing and increasing. It's just, you know, um, you know, we, we have to address inflation in our country. And, you know, we can do that. Now, I, I would recommend this president first, we got to, you know, address the supply chain issues. Let's look at quit paying people not to work. Yeah. That has driven up the payrolls and the cost of labor. And most important, we got to get energy down. If energy yeah. goes up, we all pay for yeah, that. It, and families are paying now more than they ever have because of the failed Biden policy. It is a driver for inflation. Uh, Congressman Palazzo, always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, taking time to join us today. And thanks for uh, fighting a good fight on Capitol Hill. Thank you, sir. All right.